G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and today I want to have a chat to you guys about Hugel culture. What is it? How I used it in this very garden bed here without even knowing about it and perhaps you have too and what makes it so excellent for growing your fruit and veg. Now I want to use this bed here as my example because at the moment I've got some vegetables growing in here and some beautiful tomatoes, some black Russians, some of these tomato berries, sweet potato, I've got kale, there's basil, there's Asian greens, there's beans, all in this one bed. But before I explain how I constructed this garden bed using the Hugel culture principle, I have to come clean and let you know that it was totally by accident. So what happened was, I was reading the comments on one of my videos and one of you guys, a few months back, said, hey Mark, just wondering if you practice Hugel culture or have you used it in the garden? And I've read this word and I thought, that looks like double Dutch to me. But in fact, Hugel culture is German, meaning hill culture or mound culture. So yeah, Googling, I found out all this information and I found out that it was effectively, you build up a nice big mound with all this organic matter, logs, sticks, leaves, whatever, plant material. And then on top of that, you lay soil, compost, mulch, and that's where it then becomes a mound where you can plant and grow vegetables and fruit trees or whatever, crops. And it just so happens that this bed here, I've been practicing hugel culture in it and I didn't even know. In fact, all these beds along here are done using the hugel culture method. So this bed, this round one in front of the rectangular bed that I'm just demonstrating. This one here that I've got the mint growing in, you might have remembered that from my grow a ton of mint video. This round galvanized here, this one, this one here, this one, and this other rectangular galvanized raised bed that mirrors the one on the other side there, exactly. So all of them I've used the Hugel culture method with logs and leaves and sticks and twigs and just fill them halfway up with organic matter. And it really has worked a treat. If I compare it to my early days of gardening, say 12 or 13 years ago, when I made those raised beds out the back here, and hopefully you can still see me. But when I filled these ones out down here, these large oval raised beds, I was told by the manufacturer where I got them from that you should put about a foot or two of drainage in the bottom, like crushed granite, and then your dirt, your compost, your mulch on top of that for your growing medium. But I've since found out over the last decade or so, just through experimentation, that you, you don't need drainage at all in large high raised beds like this. In fact, those beds there are, are definitely more thirstier than these beds here. I mean, I can call them the Hugel culture method of bed, but to me, because I never knew about that method or process anyway, I would just probably call them the raised beds with logs and organic matter used as drainage or as a base or as a fill with soil and compost on top, uh, instead of any fancy German name, <laughs> to be quite honest. So what does the process do of lining the base of your raised garden bed with all this organic material, and large organic material too in many cases, big logs and sticks? Well, it serves several excellent purposes. The first thing it does, and it's not often mentioned when you read about hugel culture and that is for a raised garden bed like this it adds fill 
If you filled this whole raised garden bed with good organic soil that you buy from a landscaping mob, that can cost quite a lot of money. And the fact is you don't need you know, three or two feet of organic soil for vegetables to grow in. Most crops only need about a foot of growing medium. And don't forget, you can also add to the medium compost and mulch, which also help to build it up. So it makes sense not to waste fill like organic soil or even crushed granite and other types of fill that you have to pay for, for the base of the raised bed like this. It makes sense to use whatever you've got around. Offcuts, rubbish, and in my case, I've got plenty of debris down the back there that I can cut up, logs, etc., and place in the bottom of this bed. The second thing is, it helps the garden bed to absorb and hold water. As the logs and sticks break down, they act as sponges. That absorption can then be released and used by the plants and utilize that water that's been soaked up in them. The other thing that is so effective about this method of gardening is that as the organic matter underneath the soil breaks down, and you can imagine the plant's roots going down into that, it breaks down and releases nutrients and acts as a type of fertilizer. It acts as food for the fruit and vegetables. And there's another benefit. As the logs and the sticks are breaking down, that process generates energy. So it releases heat into the soil. And plants do love nice warm soil. Cold climates in particular, or even here through winter, that process of it slowly breaking down and releasing a little bit of warmth into the garden bed is beneficial for say my tomatoes, which don't grow too well in this type of climate, especially during winter. But as you can see, I'm getting at least some excellent fruit out of my tomatoes when perhaps I really shouldn't be at this time of year, when the temperatures are getting sometimes sub-zero. And the final thing about the breaking down process and using the Hugel culture method is that microbes and worms that are feeding and living in that breaking down material and the logs and the sticks, they also start to get a relationship with the plants. Fungi as well. Plants rely on microbes and fungi and worms not just to break down the soil for nutrients but to also help the roots take up certain nutrients that the plants need to thrive. So let me just pick this plump red tomato berry variety of tomato and squeeze between these two Hugel culture beds, because I guess that's what they're called. Even though if it wasn't for you guys, I still probably wouldn't have known what Hugel culture was. I hope you enjoyed the video of me explaining Hugel culture, even though to me it was just a, a logical way of getting extra fill into these raised garden beds. And by adding that extra fill, being logs and sticks and organic matter, that could break down, attract microbes and worms, which in turn helps the plants through fertilization, keeping the soil a little bit warmer than it otherwise would, retaining moisture and the symbiotic nature between fungi and animals, helping the plants, making them in theory thrive, which I think the proof is in the pudding. Mm. How juicy was that? Mm. Excuse me. Oh, that's divine. So thanks a lot for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it as well because that helps heaps. Website, selfsufficientme.com. Bye for now. I think I'll go and have another tomato.